Hey everyone, and welcome back to Miranda Patron Art. I'm Miranda, back with you here to do another fun mandala stone. I have something a little different today. I kind of mispoured a stone in one of the Happy Dot and Company molds I have, and it has a dent in it, so I'm going to try and think of an imaginative way to use this little stone, because I hate wasting, and I don't want to throw it out. So. So my video of the stone before I painted it didn't come out too good. So I'm not sure if you can see in here, there's an indentation where it just didn't fill in enough with the potter's plaster. And so I'm just going to get creative with this stone and we're going to make that a little nest for our gal here. So stick with me. We're going to paint this fun spring stone using some sponges and blending and doing some nice spring greens. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I have gotten some great greens recently that I can't wait to use from Deco Art. And I'm going to also show a little bit of the blending here on the stone. So I got makeup brushes. Just because I find that they're a lot easier to blend together two colors, you don't get the brush lines. It just, it works really well. I'm not really adept at using them for makeup either, so it's probably good that I'm just using them for painting. <laughs> so you can see I'm just taking multiple colors here and I'm going around that little dot or dent area. I'm so used to saying dot. And I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of ombre, light and green, kind of make it look like a little grassy, leafy area for our little ladybug. And one of the things too about the potter's plaster is it will soak the paint in really nicely so it's easy to blend. You can see the nice matte look that it's already getting. But I'm just going around the little dent area here. So if you find a natural stone too, this is something you could do with a natural stone. Just make a little leaf and put a little ladybug in it. I actually have some other ideas going in my brain now that I did this, of course, because you know it always inspires other things. So hopefully you will be inspired as well. But you can see how well this is so soft. It washes really well, these sponges. I just have to wring it out a bit, but it's blending really nicely here. I honestly have not used this on a real stone yet, a natural stone. Um, so that will probably be coming up in the future as well. Um, just because this potter plaster obviously it soaks in really nicely, it blends really nicely. So the art stones are really a lot easier to use with this. But I think if you put down a matte color first on a real stone, you probably would be able to do this as well. So I'm just finishing up this little bit of a darker area and then blend these a little bit. And you can see we have a nice little leafy nest background started. And as usual, I'll post all the links. So these sponges will be in there. All the links of where I get everything. So you guys can test them out if you want. I think we are just about good with that. Looks pretty good. Alright, so now I'm going to take my compass. And I'm just kind of giving myself a guideline here. You guys know I don't always use guidelines, but I think it'll be helpful in this regard since A, it's going to be off center. Also, we have this indentation to kind of work around, so let's help, help ourselves out as best we can. So I made this circle. This is a four inch stone. I made the first circle at about one and three quarter inches, and then the larger circle is at about two and a half, um, two, two and a half inches. And I'm going to start with the Venetian gold. And this is an acrylic rod. They are flat on the bottom. And I'll post a link for those as well. And I'm just eyeballing this, but you guys could draw your grid lines. I'm just making the plus sign first. So see, I'm just doing them in a plus sign, like you would a normal mandala. And then go in the opposite spaces 
This one I kind of have to push the paint up a little as I dot it just so it doesn't dribble down the edge because of the shape of the stone. It's convex, right? Convex is like when it's curved on the outside. It's been a while. So then in between each of these we'll put another dot of the Venetian gold. And this kind of helps delineate that indentation area that I'm, I don't really want to paint in because it would be a waste of waste of a design because our little gal is going to rest there on the stone. This jadeite glass is so pretty. I've really enjoyed working with this over the past couple years. So I'm just using the etcher tool and I'm going to, I think people are calling this walking the dots now. So you're just going in a progressive size from larger and it'll go to smaller automatically as the paint works its way off the tool. So, you know, I dot it and then I need a little bit more on because I'm doing more dots. This dot is a little bit larger to go around. But you can see as you go around, the dots get smaller. Now if you're using brushes, you just let up on your pressure to get the smaller dots. You'll see that probably later. I'll use the brush for a bit. But this et etcher tool is great. Usually this is what I etch the designs on instead of pencil because I'm not a big fan of erasing pencil lines. Also depends on your muscle memory here with what side you start on. I'll go down both sides of this Venetian gold dot, but it's um, yeah, it's kind of like a muscle memory thing. You know, I write right-handed, so using my right hand, I just have to make sure I don't stick my hand in the paint and get it situated in a way that is good for me. So that's another reason this turntable is a fantastic tool to be able to use because you can spin spin your work as you're working on it. The gripper for mine I just got at the Dollar Tree. It's like a pack of two, I think, for a dollar. And it's the six inch size, so they fit perfectly on this little turntable. And they hold your piece in place. But you can see even, I like to work on whatever section is in front of me. It makes it easier, especially with eyesight issues. It's easier just to see where you're placing things in front of you and placing the dots. Plus on the sides here, it's a little challenging, so we'll just take our time here and dot around the edge. So I will say while I have a minute, I'm going to try to keep more things in my online shop now, more links in my online shop, just MirandaPatroneArt.com. Uh, just because of all the fees with Etsy and other various platforms, it just keeps going up and up, and I just can't afford to keep doing that. <laughs> so I'll just probably be using my website mainly if you guys are looking for these tools. If I don't post an Amazon link, it'll be in my shop. All right, so this is the Etcher, and I'm going to be using the bright green color now. Just to give you an idea here from the side, see I'm actually touching it to the stone. Sometimes I'll have to tap it to get a little more paint to come off. But I am actually just touching it to the stone. Dip it and dot. As you work with tools more you'll see too how much paint you need to load on each tool. And that way you'll know how much to use for each section that you need to do. But for the most part, it's pretty easy. Just dip, dot, and let the paint run off the tool as you go around, and the dots will get smaller. So just like I did when I started the first round of dots around this, I'm going to do the right side first, just because that's easier for me. And that way I avoid sticking my hand in the paint. <laughs> I know that there's a lot of people out there too making wrist rests, so it's something you can kind of rest your wrist on to steady your hand. 
I personally don't have any of those, but I could look up some and put links for that too. I sometimes use my other hand as a rest too, if that's helpful. So getting on the edge can be a little dicey, so I usually just move the stone up so I can take a look at it while I'm putting it on. But also the angled dotting tool sometimes will help with this if you don't want to touch the stone too much and worry about sticking your hands in your wet paint. We're just going to finish dotting out these bright green dots on this ring. And I just want to remind you guys too, there's algorithms that are just suppressing everything now on social media and YouTube, all those. So if you guys could even just stop in the comments and say hi, say where you're from, even just leave an emoji if that's cool, something in the comments just that gives YouTube the heads up that people are watching these videos. I know a lot of you watch on TV, so it's not a big deal. I know you can't comment on there, but if you're watching on your computer or on your phone, please just pop in the comments a second, say hi. Plus, I love to hear from you all, hear what you're working on, hear how life is going, hear what kind of things you would like in upcoming videos, like to see. All right. So this bluegrass green is another one of my favorites. I think I just love colors. <laughs> so from the side here, I am going to show you the first round of dots that we just put down. The first couple rounds, they're dry. So that also stops it from the potential to bleed into one another if you're getting your dots in really close to one another. And now I'm using the angled brush now. So you can see there's like a little point at the end of the bristles and as you work your way around you just put less pressure on that point and it will make the smaller dots. So you just have to practice kind of working with it to, as you go around, let up a little lighter, let up a little lighter, and then you'll kind of get the idea of muscle memory and practice will work it out there for you. And some people never go to a brush. Don't feel intimidated by that. If you're doing fine with the tools, then keep using the tools. There's no need to have to paint with a brush. I've seen amazing paintings done with fingers, finger painting, or other kinds of tools, palette knives. I mean, there's nothing that says you have to use a brush. It becomes just personal preference of what you prefer to use and what's easiest for you. So you can see we're just following around that same ring that we started with the bright green. This one I kind of didn't really know where the top center was <laughs> from my way I was sitting, so. That's also something to keep in mind is that no one else critiques our things like we do. Don't be so hard on yourself. Just enjoy the painting and just keep trying. Don't give up. Try new things. Try it on stones. Try it on paper. Try it on things that aren't super expensive if you're just practicing and then you won't feel as stressed about experimenting with it. And so this, you can see, it gets a little harder on the edges, but it's doable. And personally, I think the brush works better just because you can kind of press it into the areas as opposed to a, a hard tool. Oh yeah, there we go, I'll make a mess. <laughs> Alright, this is when you grab the silicone tool and then you just scrape the paint off and then I'll just blend a little bit of the lighter paint on there. But that's also the beauty of having a background. If you use a background color, you can just paint over it. These ones were blended, so I'll just grab some of the lighter green, toss it on there when it dries, and we will start our next round again. See how fast that was? <laughs> All right, there we go. <clears throat> I 
But really, making mistakes aren't the end of the world. That's how we learn. And I've said in the past, too, I don't like to think of them as mistakes. If you think your spacing's off or whatever, nine times out of ten, somebody else is not going to notice that. You're creating art. We're not machines. It's supposed to just be a calming, enjoyable time of painting. I need to be reminded of that quite often, to remind myself. But you can see too the development of the ombre kind of design where you go light to dark here. It's pretty fun. And it just mimicked basically what we put on the stone with the sponge. I think our little leaf is coming along nicely. And see here with the angle, I don't have to pick up the stone. I can still kind of reach it with the angled brush or the angled tools too. All right, so let's go back to that silicone tool since I brought it out there to clean up something. And this I want to show you makes ovals. So the littler end makes tiny little petals, super cute. I'm not going to probably use it in this, but I'll use the silicone end here to put some larger oval dots right at our second ring. And this is with that jadeite glass again. That's something I like to do rather than just keep picking a bunch of different colors is start to bring the same colors that we started with throughout the whole piece. I just think it kind of helps with the cohesion of the piece. But if you're doing like a rainbow, obviously you're not going to go back to the same colors, so rainbows work too. So don't let that deter you, but that's just my plan for this one. So really it's just a straight, flat, stamp it down, lift it up. Pretty easy, especially with these paints. Dotting one of the biggest things with dotting is the right paint consistency, as most of you probably already know. Dot art has really blown up this past couple of years. It's awesome. And I'm going to have to rock it a little bit on the edge here just to kind of get it to conform to the shape of the stone. Actually, just flip it around here so I can reach down. <clears throat> just that way it's the same size oval as the rest of them. And for this one, it's not an angled tool. I'm going to have to lift it up just because I want to make sure that we continue the pattern for as far as we can see when we're setting down the stone. And see that's kind of a rock and rock back and forth motion as well to kind of make sure that the paint gets on both sides there. And this one, because it's on the edge, again, I'm just going to push the paint to the top and that gives it time to kind of solidify and dry once we set it down so it doesn't drip off the bottom of your piece. So sometimes I'll even pick it up and blow on it a little bit to kind of create the drier edge so that it's less likely to come off the piece. Alright, so I'll grab the bright green again here and the brush. And I'm just going around those ovals that we just put down now with the bright green. You can see the slower motion of just dot, dot. I find it very therapeutic. So just taking your time, placing each dot, and just enjoying the time painting. back from the top view, same round with the bright green and the brush, I'm just going down around the right side, and we'll do that around each of our jadeite ovals here. So you're just pushing down a little bit harder at the top to get the larger dot, and then you can even do the large ovals with this paintbrush, 
You just paint yourself an oval. I think it's fun to show the tools and then it's helpful for more people that way, I think. This little ladybug's gonna love her spot. How are you guys doing? Is it going okay? Probably have a pretty nice design going at this point. Just remember to enjoy the time. Just relax. Don't get too stressed. And if you're somebody who likes it faster, feel free to fast forward on through. Obviously you get the point of what I'm doing now. I'm just putting a couple of rings of this bright green around the oval. We're starting to kind of get into the zone of where we had blended the bright green paint. So in the video it looks like it's maybe not showing up as well, but once you varnish it you'll be able to see all the colors pop. It doesn't fade into the background. That's another thing, I'll put all the colors in the description as well that I use to make these. Okay, so I'm going to go back and grab that blue grass. So now I'm actually showing one of the angled dotting tools. It's also called a stylus. They're usually straight when you buy them. They come without that angle at the end of the tip, but after a couple user years of using my brushes, I started bending the tips of the dotting tools for my classes, and it actually has proven to be quite helpful. You can see where you're placing the dots. I can see on the video when I'm doing it, it makes it a lot easier. So if you're interested, I have these tools in my shop, but also if you already have a pair of a set of tools that are straight, I have a video that'll show you how to bend them as well if you're interested in that. Let's see how the paint just runs off the tool and you'll automatically get smaller dots just by doing that. A big dot at the top and then they just get smaller automatically as you go around. There's no, no really trick to it. And also too, you can see the angle helps so I don't have to pick up the stone on the sides. I can still kind of see where I want to tuck each one of these dots into without having to pick up the stone and potentially stick my fingers in the wet paint. How you feeling guys? This is going great. Love this spring green mandala. I'm really thankful that I could find a use for this stone because I really didn't want to have to get rid of it. Alright, so of course you all know me. Gotta add some metallics. <laughs> Gonna one of these acrylic rods. Actually that one's a little big so I'm gonna go a little bit smaller. I don't want it to take up the whole oval, oval dot. So I'm gonna grab the smaller one here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're gonna go at the bottom of the oval and just kinda tap that little circle dot with the metallic green. 
Here's it from the side so you can see. It's really just a perpendicular motion. Fill it up with paint and then just choose your spot and then tap it right down in. Sometimes too I'll kind of rock the acrylic rod around a little bit to make sure I get that full circle. This metallic paint is pretty fluid so it's going to pull into a circle already for me but if I'm using a paint that's a little for lack of a better term tackier, thicker, it, um, it behooves me to kind of roll it around and make that better circle. It comes out a little nicer. Let's see, just because this is not an angled tool, I'm just going to pick it up like this and tap the edge there. Alright, so this one's a multi-surface paint, and I'm going to go with the silicone tool again. And we're going to go in between each of these with this chiffon, lemon chiffon. <clears throat> these ones kind of shine on their own, the multi-surface, when they are dry because they cure and they technically don't need a varnish. But I just felt like this was the perfect yellow for this stone, so I'm going to use this one. They're also a little bit thicker and heavier, so you'll see I didn't go back and push the paint up on the side <laughs> because they tend to not drip on the sides, I guess. But really, it's just a flat, well, technically it's a little bit on an angle with this tool just to get that flat, almost like a horse hoof, just that flat angle. There you go. But you can see too, just by adding that pop of yellow, the difference it makes in the piece. It helps bring out the gold, it helps contrast the green. So back to the etcher now, I didn't get quite enough on the tool, but we'll go around our yellow dots here, our yellow ovals with the matcha green. almost looks the same color as the yellow, but it's not. It's just a yellowy green. After we varnish it too, you'll be able to see the difference. Which I think at the end of this video too, I'll pop a varnish video on for doing this stone so you guys can kind of see what I usually work with. <clears throat> Alright, so from the side here I am using iced espresso, no, rich espresso another metallic <laughs> and I'm just tucking a dot of that with the angled dotting stylus in between on either side of the yellow rich espresso And sometimes I hold these at the edge end, but you can also just hold it like a pencil down near the top. It'll make it a little steadier for you. I'm just holding it like the paintbrush. <laughs> Back to my bluegrass, and we'll grab one of the dotting tools. 
I think we'll go a little bit larger at the top here and then just do a couple on the side a bit smaller after. So you can see actually by looking at this that yellow did slide down a little bit but it didn't break the edging of where the yellow was if that makes sense so it didn't break out of the oval it might even still be a little bit wet I could probably just tip the stone up and blow on it it'll dry But this is another one of those things where I kind of just decide as I go when I make these mandalas. It's like a choose your own adventure, I like to call it. But <clears throat> looking at it on the screen, seeing the spacing, sometimes I walk away and come back to it. I don't always have a plan in mind other than the color scheme. And even then, as I did with the yellow on this, I didn't use all the greens. I just thought the gold and the yellow would complement each other and the greens. So it just being flexible and enjoying the time and also keep in mind you can always go back and do it a different way next time or paint another stone a different color or paint over this whole thing again and start it over. It's never permanent. So we'll do a couple of bright green dots down here just because I feel like I need to fill in that space for some reason to delineate where the ladybug is going to sit just a little bit more. Yep, I think that's good. So we're gonna do a top dot of this darker yellow. Oh, actually, let's do a couple dots in between here too. This is going along with what I said earlier about kind of bringing your same colors throughout the piece. I'll just put a couple of these in here so that the top dot is not the only place that I have this darker yellow. A little bit more there. My yellow chiffon is still wet, so I'm going to switch over here to show you some swipes with the dotting tool. It's just a dip and drag, very easy. Just practice on a piece of paper first to see how far you can drag that paint out till you get the size tail you want. But really the angled tools can do it for you too. The etcher does, go, does them really well as well. You can use the brushes. I mean, it just depends on what you're comfortable with. But a lot of people have asked about it with the angled dotting tools. So here you go. <clears throat> now I have these Artistro paint markers. And you can varnish over these, they don't bleed. I absolutely love them. And now they have metallic ones. So I'm gonna go with this nice little peridot metallic green that they have here. And we'll just kind of do a decorative edge to our little leaf nest. But this way too, I get my greens in and I get metallic at the top. <laughs> and you can kind of control the design. I mean, you can do this with the paintbrush as well. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with these pens, these paint markers. It's got a great shine to it. When I varnish it, it doesn't use, lose the shine. They have good control. One thing I will say if you're doing a rougher stone is you don't want to catch the tip. So try to stay smooth or keep a lot of paint on it. Because it will catch and kind of splatter. But... Here we go, a nice little decorative addition. So since I went with Peridot color for the marker, I'm just gonna carry it off to the side here. This is DecoArt Peridot Metallic, and we'll just do three dots at the top of each one of the green elements here. And I think as far out on the edge as I want to go because I kind of want to leave some of that little blended area showing. Alright, 
dots. Let's put our cadmium yellow here on the top dots. Remember that was the one we did the two little dots before down in. But I think this lemon is dry enough now. We'll just pop these on here with our angled tool. And here is our little girl. She's waiting so patiently for her leaf nest. Together at last. I think it fits perfectly. I did measure the stone beforehand to see what would fit in the dent, just so you all know. <laughs> but I'll list the colors I popped on her too. And there she is, basking in the sunlight. Okay, so I think I will add the varnish section in here for you guys so you can really see the difference it makes when we put a nice clear coat on these. It does look matte. You can see here in the video they're pretty matte colors but I like to put the gloss varnish on them to protect them but also stop them from color fade and the one that I use is Liquitex Professionals it's actually a really great product I have put it on everything from canvas to wood to stone to plastic and it works fantastic I love it I even if you guys have been with me for a while you probably know the story of my stones outside that I hit with the lawnmower <laughs> Um, and they still didn't even chip. It actually did more damage to the lawnmower. So this one is gloss. I'm going to use the high gloss in the video today. But you can see the price range for the sizes. So I know like Joann's Fabric, Michael's, those have the 40% off coupon sometimes. And it probably would be much better price for you if you use the one-time coupon on this product. But definitely worth the money. It's definitely worth the investment. Um, I absolutely love this product and I've been using it for years. There are other things out there that are pretty great, but I just haven't found anything as good. <laughs> so I keep coming back to what I know. So I usually use a sponge brush to put this on. This one is way too big for this, but since we had the flood in our basement and my studio is here, I lost a lot of products and we've moved around a lot. I can't find a smaller one. And I also would much rather use the denser ones. This one is a little, not furrier, but spongier. It has more space between the sponge. If you can see on the end, it's kind of fuzzy. I don't want that because the more you work it, you're going to have bubbles that you're going to have to pop in your varnish, resin, whatever you're spreading it with. So I don't, I'd rather use that. But for today, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> I generally pour it on the stone anyway first. So we'll just show it with this here which obviously is going to be massive overkill for this tiny little ladybug. <laughs> so I like to get a little on the sponge first here. And it's, it still doesn't even hold the varnish as well as the denser sponges. So I'll put a link for the denser sponges that I have from Amazon. But really just don't overwork it. Just gently brush it across so there's not a big thick part. See the difference? Look at the shine already. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Just gonna leave that one in there because I can't cut it out. There we go. She's shining up nicely and this, like I said, will protect it from the sun, water, rain. This, she could go outside. She's an actual natural stone. And the art stone too, if you did all the way around, I've put them outside before and never had a problem. So th that art stone being the handmade stones. So you'll see this is matte now. We're going to put this gloss on here and I like to get a nice thick coat on it and try to work it quick around the whole stone and don't overwork it because it'll start to get cloudy. Also we want to make sure that our paint um, is dry before thoroughly before we go and put the varnish on. So I'm just going to catch the drips off the side here get it all around and we'll let it dry and then I'll give you guys a visual on the difference and how they look when they are dry. But see, super fast, fully protected, can go outside and last for, for I don't know, over 10 years I've had my stones outside with it. It's just a great product. And you guys know that I like to share with you what I can. so. I'm going to let these dry and then we'll see what they look like after.
Alrighty, here is our girl all finished up, ready to roll. It's about an hour later, so it's dry to the touch, but you can see the nice shine. Like I said, I wouldn't put it outside probably for 24 hours if you're going to do that, and also make sure it's totally sealed, but I hope you enjoyed doing this gal with me. You can see even the Artistro pens are fine. Nice and shiny, she can even sit on there. I hope you guys had fun doing this with me today. It's great being back with you all, and I am looking forward to many new adventures this year. Please feel free to pop a comment for things you'd like to see in the future. Um, like I said, just anything. Hi, hello, a little emoji. Just say hi to me and let me know how you're doing. And uh, I hope you guys have an awesome day. This was super fun for me. So glad I didn't have to throw out a stone. <laughs> But, uh, all right, take care, you guys, and we will see you all again real soon.